Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome tonight to our very first uh, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks Ice Fishing Webinar. Um, we're going to talk tonight. Um, this is the introductory series. We're going to have a series of three. And tonight, my name's first off, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Maggie Lindsay. I uh, work for South Dakota Game Fish and Parks Education Services Coordinator. And I've been ice fishing since I was about eight years old. Absolutely loved ice fish. And we want to do these webinars to pass that passion on to every, everyone. Um, ice fishing is a great way to get outdoors in the winter on a beautiful winter day. There's nothing more great than getting out there on the ice and catching some fish. It's a wonderful recreational opportunity. And it's something that you can do with the whole family. Plus, the fish you catch in the winter out of that cold, clear ice taste fantastic. So tonight, we're going to have our first series. We're going to cover ice safety, rules and regulations, fish species and equipment. Now, if you have any questions along the way or comments, please type them in the chat. And at the end of this session, we're going to take some time to answer all your questions. So first off, I'm going to hand you off and show you a short video clip of our experts that helped with this presentation. Hi, I'm Clint from the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks in Rapid City. I'm the Group Programs Coordinator Naturalist, and we're out here ice fishing today. Hi, my name is Katie Schlafke, and I'm a Volunteer Coordinator and Naturalist at the Outdoor Campus in Rapid City with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. My name's Kelly. I'm the Education Program Assistant out of the Game Fish and Parks Fort Pier office. Hi, I'm Lori Root with Game Fish and Parks, and I am the Community Programs Coordinator out of Rapid City, and I'm also a naturalist. I'm Maggie Lindsay with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks, Education Services Coordinator out of Pier, and we're going to teach you all about ice fishing today. Hi there, I'm Connor Olson. I'm Trent Sasala, and we are with the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Hi everyone, I'm Kyle Potter with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks here in the Fort Pier office and I have been ice fishing most of my life since I was about five and you can do the math on how many years I fished. Hi my name is Bob Hanton I'm a fisheries biologist with the South Dakota Department of Game Fish and Parks and I've been ice fishing for over 30 years. All right, these, those were the experts that are gonna help us with this webinar today. Now, the first thing that you need to know about is ice safety. Um, you can't go ice fishing unless the ice is safe. So we're gonna once again, turn it over to the experts and show you some tips on ice safety. Hi, my name is Tyler Kruckelberg. I'm the conservation officer in Oneida, South Dakota. Just here today to talk to you about some ice safety tips. So to kind of summarize uh, some of the big safety items that you can have with you um, when you're out ice fishing. And I'll kind of run through these things with you here. So the first one I'll talk with you guys about is this red bar here is called a spud bar. Um, a spud bar has got quite a bit of weight to it, but essentially what you're doing with this is you're taking it as you walk along the ice, you're just punching it into the ground to check ice thickness. Um, again, about two punches. If you can punch it twice in one spot, um, it's generally safe to walk on. This is an example of finding unsafe ice by using a spud bar. As you can see, he has that spud bar and he's jamming it into the ice. You're supposed to jam it twice in one spot and some of those times he can't even get it once before it pokes all the way through the ice. This is 100% unsafe ice. But as I mentioned earlier, ice is never completely safe. Um, the other item you can have, in the event that you did ever fall through, um, having ice picks with you can be really important. Um, these will, obviously when you fall through the ice, water on top of ice makes it extremely slippery. And you want these to be readily available for you, so having them around your neck like this gives you the ability to grab them and use them. And you jam these into the ice, and that helps you give you traction in the event that you do fall into the water or fall through the ice. Um, for either yourself or even if it's just available for you and someone else ever needed to come help you or rescue you, having any kind of rope, this is a throw bag here that's uh, kind of designed to throw out to somebody in the event that someone falls out of a boat or anything or falls through the ice. But having something to throw out to um, Either yourself, if somebody else needed to come save you, or um, one of your buddies that you might be fishing with, 
This um, allows you to throw something to them to help pull them out in the event that someone did go through the ice. And um, as most of you know, this is a life jacket. Um, having these on, for one, it gives you a little more insulation, so either wearing it under your jacket, um, it just helps keep you warm, and then it also keeps you floating above, so you're not having to do all the work to try to tread water in the event that you did fall through the ice um, and nowadays they have jackets and uh, bibs that can help you float as well um, that are designed for ice fishing and then another thing a safety thing uh, obviously ice when there's no snow on top of it or if it's just glare ice it's obviously slippery so having something on your boots these are called ice cleats there's all different forms of ice cleats out there but these give you the ability to have good traction to move on ice because um, it doesn't take much for somebody to slip and fall and hit your head um, and have issues with that and you might break an arm or knock yourself out anything like that that's uh, important to have safe traction when you're on the ice so these are kind of some of the safety items to have um, when you go out on the ice ice fishing or anything else if you ever come across a situation where you do fall through the ice it's important to stay calm and attempt what is called a self-rescue so he's going to demonstrate it for us here, and he's going to try and stay as horizontal as possible and try and kick his feet behind him while he's trying to get traction on the ice right here. This is also where those picks would come in handy. Then he's going to roll away from the hole and push himself as far away from the hole as he can, either with your feet or by rolling over on your belly and army crawling. These are all good techniques to try and get yourself out of the water and onto safer ice. Now here's another example of him showing us how you would get out of the ice if you were all by yourself. Now here's another technique he's showing us. So if you're on really weak ice, there's a possibility that you can bust through the ice and get to stronger ice. This one looks a little funny because he's busting away from shore, but he's just doing this for demonstration purposes for us. Ice is a very dangerous situation and you don't want to mess around on it. If you're in a situation and one of your friends falls through and they are struggling at all, Please call your local fire department. They have the trained professionals and equipment to get you out of the ice and make sure you're safe. Hello everyone. My name is Kyle Potter. I work for South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. I work in the world of fisheries and in the great state of South Dakota. And the other things I enjoy doing is not only hunting, I also enjoy ice fishing. And with ice fishing, the number one priority is to keep your head above water and keep safe. Be sure you stay above the ice line is the most important tool. Um, some important things to keep in mind, not all ice is safe. There is a lot of bad ice out there and every year is different. This year in 2020, the winter of 2020 and 2021, the ice is extremely poor throughout the state. The, uh, way we had cool cool temperatures and then it got warm and then it's warm and cold is creating very poor ice conditions um, so safety is very important um, again another thing to keep in mind clean clear ice is the safest and most stable ice there is once you start to get ice that's colored like this that is kind of a milky milky color that ice integrity is not 100% there. It cannot support a lot, a lot of weight unless it's extremely thick. So make sure, again, clean, clear, new ice is the, new, is, is the best. Uh, stay away, stay away from bridge areas where there's current. Stay away from river stretches that have hard current areas and bends and things like that. Stay away from points that come out into the lake. Uh, the water will run around the, the points and create shallow ice areas in those areas. Another one to keep in mind, and very important, especially this year, is pressure ridges. So as ice forms and grows, it expands. And when it expands, it forms these what's called pressure ridges. And they can be anywhere in the middle or the shoreline of the lakes, and you'll have mounds of ice. That mound of ice, depending on the weather, will melt and refreeze and melt and refreeze so you end up with this very poor ice condition area 
Um, it may be safe right up to the edge of the of the pressure ridge, but in the pressure ridges or the open hole area, it is very unstable and very treacherous. So please stay away from those areas. I need to share so again. Remember, I said I was an avid uh, hunter. Um, one year in January, here in the Pier area where I live currently, I went on a goose hunt. When we were trying to retrieve a couple of geese that were down in the river, my dog decided to go um, on his own will across the ice and plunge into the open water to get these geese. Um, I thought I knew what I was doing at the time. Again, everyone wants to save their dog. This is not the time to be doing it. Uh, the certain areas and most fire departments and search and rescue departments will retrieve animals for you and they they want your dog to be alive just as much as you but they also want you to stay alive so please if your dog goes into the drink don't follow suit don't follow what i did and dive in to get rid of rescuing your dog please call the fire department please call the fire department to retrieve your dog for you but needless to say if it wasn't for the help of my neighbor and two area hunters that happened to be just luckily to be there and then the, the rescue squad as well I was in the water for over 40 minutes and I had hypothermia for quite a while and I survived and I am very blessed to be here talking to you today so please um, take it safe please continue to check ice as you continue to go out all ice is not the same as I said before and please continue to, to be slow as you go out on, onto a new body of water and, and ask people in the area where there is bad ice, where there is pressure ridges. You need to, need to trust other people but you also need to be adamant and careful for yourself. These were a few basic tips and tricks on ice safety. If you're cautious and you're careful about what you're doing, there's no reason that you can't go out and have a safe, fun ice fishing experience. All right, the next thing we need to talk to you about is regulations. First off, before you go out, you're going to need to buy a fishing license. If you just want to go out and give it a try um, and don't want to buy an annual license, you can buy a, a one day license or even a three day license in in game fishing park uh, in South Dakota. Um, in the water, in when you're ice fishing, you can have up to four rods in the summertime. When the water's open, you can only have two rods. But in the wintertime, you can fish four. And that includes tip-ups. We're going to cover tip-ups a little bit in this in the, some of the other videos, um, but you can have four lines at a time. So that's pretty cool that you can uh, fish four lines at a time. Um, the boundary waters, those are waters that are shared with uh, Nebraska and South Dakota. They might have different daily limits. So you'll need to make sure that you're familiar with the regulations if you're going to be fishing in the boundary waters. And of course, anywhere you're fishing, you're going to need to be familiar with the daily bag limits and the regulations. The number of fish that may be taken in a daily limit by anglers is from 1201 to midnight. Um, that means that you're, if you're going to be fishing for two days on the ice, and we have people that go out and spend the night on the ice, and you know, especially those in fish houses and stuff, um, and they'll keep have have uh, multiple days on the ice. They can their daily bag limit counts from 1201 in the morning until midnight. So if they stay two days, they can actually have two daily bag limits on the ice as long as they've been there for two days. You can go ahead and clean and cook your fish on the ice if there is no length specific limit. This means that, for instance, there's regulations that say, in, for instance, in Lake Sharp here, where um, certain times a year you have a limit on walleyes, they have to be at least 15 inches long before you can keep them. If there is that minimum length limit on that water body where you're fishing, you can't clean or cook those fish. They have to be remain whole. So if you get checked by a conservation officer, they can measure that fish. But if you're on a water body where you can, where there is no minimum limit, then you can clean and cook those fish. 
we we don't want you you can't be putting the the carcasses and the guts back in the lake you'll need to bag those and take you with them and and dispose of them properly or you can cook your fish on the ice now if you do cook your fish on the ice those count against your limit when i was a kid my brother and i uh, one of our favorite things was after we caught a couple trout was to run to shore and start a campfire and put them on a stick and cook those trout and i can tell you those trout were delicious out there you know when you're a kid that was quite an adventure but we you know if you're in an ice house or an ice shack or have a little cooker on the ice these fish out of the ice that come out from under the ice in this clean clear cold water are just fabulous but if you eat if the limit if you have six fish and you eat two of your fish well those two fish you ate still count against your limit so just because you eat your fish on the ice that day doesn't mean they don't count against your limit so um as for fish houses and shelters um most of you aren't going to be using a fish house but if you do it your name and address has to be displayed on it most of us are going to be using um if we use a shelter we're going to just be using our temporary shelter where we take it out put it up fish and then at the end of the day take it down and take it with us um, so those rules don't apply to those temporary shelters that you're carrying out on the ice. The AIS regulations, AIS is aquatic invasive species. Those are species that get accidentally put in a water body and they threaten the habitat, they threaten the native species, they threaten the game species in that, and they pretty much can destroy the fishery. We are doing our best at GFP to stop um, aquatic invasive species. And we as anglers, it's our responsibility to help stop um, the spread of AIS, uh, aquatic invasive species. In the wintertime, mostly what you're going to have to worry about in bait is bait. We fish with a lot of live minnows. And after you're done fishing, you absolutely can't put those live minnows in that lake, in that water body. You need to make sure and take those and the water they're in, those minnows and the water they're in, take them back to um, one of our grinding stations and grind them up, one of our public grinding stations, or just take them and dispose of them properly in the garbage. But you can't pour them back in the water. There's always a good possibility that you might introduce, accidentally introduce an aquatic invasive species. So. All right, and where do you find all these rules and regulations? In our fishing handbook. Our fishing handbook is a free publication that you can get at any of our offices, sporting goods stores, bait shops. Um, it's a free publication. And it's just before you go out, get your rules and regulations and go through them. And when you figure out what water body you're going on, go ahead and make sure and study the rules for that water body. Another option, and I have it on my phone here too, is an app that you have on your phone. And it's up there on the slide, which is easier to see. And you can look at the reg regulations tab. This is wonderful because you have it with you. You know, it's been times where, well, for instance, a couple weeks ago, we were gonna go ice fishing. We got to the lake we were gonna fish and we didn't like the look of the ice. So we said, well, let's go to a different lake up higher up the mountain. And so we don't know if the regulations had changed, but you have your phone with you all the time. So you can just click on your regulations and there it is. There's your download. So you can research the regulations. So this is a very, really, really handy thing to have. You can also download your license on there and have it on there. So, so that's how you find out about your rules and regulations. All right, for sp fish species, um, we've got some popular species here in South Dakota that we ice fish for. And so I'm gonna turn this section over to Bob Hatton, our fish species expert. Hi, this is Bob Hanton. I'm a fisheries biologist with the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. And today I'm going to go over some of the fish you might catch ice fishing and how to identify them. The first species uh, is yellow perch. Uh, yellow perch have yellow sides and green to brown saddles on their backs. Uh, they're considered a panfish. They're found statewide and they're po really popular with ice fishermen. The next species is bluegill. Bluegills have a, a gill cover lobe that's entirely black on the side of the head. Uh, they're flat, round in shape, and they're kind of greenish yellow in color overall on their body, sometimes with a little orange on their belly. Uh, they are panfish and they're found in lakes and impoundments statewide. Another panfish uh, is crappie. In South Dakota, we have both black crappie and white crappie. 
black crappie have seven to eight spines on the top fin of the body, which is called the dorsal fin. Uh, they also have mottled black coloration on a silver background, kind of silver scales. Um, white crappies have five to six spines and have uh, more dark vertical barring. This is one of the most popular panfish uh, fish uh, in the state. Uh, they're found in small ponds and lakes. You might also encounter largemouth bass. Largemouth bass are green in color. They have a dark mid-body band uh, and a large mouth, as the name describes. Uh, the actual mouth extends, uh, the jaw extends past the line of the eye, uh, and they're able to eat large uh, food items. Uh, they thrive in natural lakes, small dams, and reservoirs throughout the state. The next uh, fish is walleye. Uh, walleye is uh, in color greenish yellow back. Uh, they have a white belly and a large glossy eye and sharp teeth in the mouth. Uh, they're found statewide, lakes, reservoirs, and rivers. They're a highly prized sport fish and they're the state fish of South Dakota. You might also encounter northern pike. They're long and body shape. Uh, they have light spots on a dark background and they have a mouth full of teeth. Uh, they're common statewide in a variety of habitats, uh, lakes, and can be found in lakes, rivers, and ponds. Rainbow trout is another fish you might encounter. Uh, they're light colored body with dark spots, uh, the tail's not deeply forked, and some of them have a a pink stripe down the middle of the body or a light pink stripe. They're not native to South Dakota, but they're, they've been stocked in streams and lakes throughout the Black Hills, urban fisheries, and sometimes found on the Missouri River. The next fish is channel catfish. They have a white belly, dark gray or black back, and a deeply forked tail and dark whiskers. Uh, they are native to the Missouri River drainage, but have been stocked in other reservoirs and natural lakes in the state. These are some of the fish you might catch ice fishing, so get outside and give it a try. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> now we're going to talk to you about equipment. Um, you don't have to get crazy expensive on equipment. It's relatively inexpensive to get into ice fishing. Um, so we just kind of got put together a list, had our experts put together a list of basic icing of ice fishing equipment that you'll probably want to have. I'm going to show you some of the rods that you can use today for ice fishing. If you notice that ice fishing rods are shorter, um, just makes it easier because you can sit right next to the hole and fish with it. Um, but you don't have to get fancy with an ice fishing rod. This is pretty simple one here. It's a simple wooden handle with a little simple wi line winder. This is great for shallower water, smaller fish like panfish, and for kids because they don't have to deal with a reel. So it makes it quite simple. All they have to do is wrap the line. Very simple little rod and you'll catch just as many fish on this as you will a, an expensive rod. The next one, pretty another one that's pretty reasonably priced, just has a simple little sort of like a level wine reel that just wraps the line. Got a little uh, nut here that just tighten it down, loosen it up and you can reel it. Once again, great for kids that are just learning, great for beginners, and extremely reasonably priced. Um, once again, it'll catch just as many as the expensive ones. This one's just a little different. It's a more like a level wind reel. Um, just a little more step up from the other one. 
It actually has, some of them have a drag on them. This one's pretty simple. It doesn't have a drag, real simple, just a little turn. And you're, you're lowering the line down and just bringing it back up. This is the good old tried and true spin cast reel. We all fished these when we were kids. Um, and they work great for ice fishing too. You can get a smaller reel that fits your little rod. Um, and I just love a spin cast reel. With, a, with kids, there's nothing to go wrong. It's easy to reel it down, reel it back up. And the beauty of it with ice fishing is you're not casting. So you don't have to deal with snarls and tangles and teaching them how to cast. All they're gonna do is press the button lower the line, click the reel, and when they're ready, reel it back in. Real simple. The only drawback is if it's really cold, sometimes it has a tendency to get ice in it and jam up. But for the majority of your beginning ice fishing, this is perfect right here. Okay, this is a spinning reel. A lot of you more experienced fishermen are, are experienced with a spinning reel. It's a smaller version of what you use in the summertime. Once again, it's great because you don't have to cast, but for you that like your spinning reels, this is perfect. Um, this is great for if it's colder, it's less likely to ice up as a spin cast reel, and they're also very reasonably priced. Covered with snow. This is kind of one of the newest versions of ice fishing. If you want to spend, you know, $50, $60 on a reel, it's called a, um, a free fall reel. I had to kind of look because it's new. Um, and it's just very simple. You just push this little button, it free falls, and then just has a big reel, you just reel it back in. It has a drag, so you can set the drag. And the advantage of this is going to be when you're fishing deeper water, or when you're fishing maybe larger fish, like walleye, catching bigger walleye. Um, but it'll also work for your little pan fish. So um, you can spend as much or as little as you want. But what we're just trying to stress is you don't have to go crazy spending a lot of money to get into ice fishing. All right, in, the, in order to catch fish we got to get through the ice and one of the most inexpensive ways is a hand auger and with this it's kind of a fun thing to do with kids too if the fish aren't biting they like to drill some holes so really got to push down hard with this with I like to use my dominant hand with that side and then just start pushing but not push too hard to where you can hear that grinding sound and let that slowly work its way down get a little bit of a workout but you'll be fishing in no time the next option uh, is run by your brushless drill that you're going to have at home. It does need to be a brushless motor and then you get a lithium battery as well. That's going to have enough power for this thing to drill in there. You're going to be really lightweight uh, and not too expensive. The next model we have is a pretty sweet little deal. Being electric and that's electric you're not going to uh, run a gas auger and fill that those fumes in your ice hut. So it's really nice to, uh, to drill a hole pretty quietly by just pushing a couple of buttons. You'll drill your hole and then it even has a reverse feature on that to be able to drill backwards and shove all that ice back down through the hole. All right, another way to get a lot more lines out, cover a lot more water is tip-ups. And this first style just sits on either side of the hole, has a little reel right here that turns this little T at the top. And as that turns, the flag goes up, indicating you have a fish. This one's exactly the same. It just has a little circular uh, top to it that covers the, the ice hole so that it doesn't freeze up as easy. Same thing, flag goes up, indicate you got a fish, run over there and reel it on in. It can get to be a pretty long day out on the ice and your feet can get pretty chilly if you're 
out there for a long time and the fish aren't biting. So it's pretty nice to have something to sit on. And especially if you're fishing with old people or little kids or people in between those two ages. So if you have a bucket, you can uh, put all your gear in the bucket to carry it out here. And you can even get one of these fancy little cushion seats to sit on with the hole in here. So as you catch your fish, you can stick your fish right in there or you can reach down in there and get your sandwich and your snack. Um, so that's kind of a handy one because it helps carry things. This one here is a little fold up and it swivels. So you can be watching your tip ups like uh, we talked about earlier so you can swivel and kind of keep an eye on all of your rods and This one right here is Wonderful for people who need some back support This one is great because it has a little flapper doodle here. That is an extra cushion You can put right there. You can sit down and lean back and it's awesome All right, one of the most important tools you can have on the ice is this shovel. It's going to come in handy quite a bit, especially if you get stuck later on and getting out, and that happens. But this shovel I'm using uh, here for removing the ice around the hole. If we leave it like this, the ice is just going to keep falling into the hole. So I try and find where that prevailing wind is coming in, and I'll start shoveling that ice around the hole that way. If this is a hole that is left outside, I want to put my little mound on that side. And since a lot of times it's slush, you can create a bit of a, a windbreak for your ice hole, and that'll give you another half hour or so of not freezing up. Then we can get our ice scoop in here and start slowly removing all of that slush. That is just going to make things difficult to get your line down the hole. Oftentimes people want to kind of move fast with it, but using a nice scoop is actually kind of a slow process. Get that ice hole all cleaned out, and you're about ready to fish. So I'll show you a little bit of ice fishing tackle, just kind of the basic ice fishing tackle that we're using today. Um, we like to fish with bobbers, so these little slip ice fishing bobbers are really nice. You're going to need bobber stops to go with them, but they're nice and the foam helps keep them from getting too iced up. You can also use a regular clip-on bobber if you wish. And then here's those bobber stops I was telling you about. We're fishing mostly pan fish today, perch today, and a few trout. So these little ice fishing jigs that you can pick up um, you don't have to buy fancy ones. Some of them are pretty small. It kind of depends. You need to figure out what you're targeting. If you're targeting blue bill, bluegills or smaller panfish like these perch, then you're going to want something like this that's quite small with a small hook. Right? And then what you're going to do is put the jig on the line and you're going to put a little piece of bait on that. If you're going for something larger, like today we're fishing for trout, we're trying also for trout, a little jig like this is nice. It's weighted. Um, it's flashy colors, and then we'll put a minnow or a minnow head on that and jig it up and down and try to fish it just right off the bottom. So a little simple fishing jig like this. You can also just go, um, we get these at Walmart, and yeah, I got a whole bundle of them here, but these just small, simple fishing jigs, just to give it a little weight to get it down to the bottom, but you do have to put some kind of bait on the hook to attract the fish. If you're fishing bigger fish like walleye deeper in the lake, then of course you're going to want a deeper, a heavier, larger weighted uh, jig like that. And you're going to once again put bait on that. And then you can't go wrong, of course, with the plain hook. If you're fishing some kind of bait like minnows, a plain hook with weight, you're still going to need some weight. So just good old simple split shot will work just perfect. So this is kind of a hodgepodge of fishing equipment. You always want these little weights. These are the ones we showed you earlier uh, to use to clip on your line to find the depth of the water. Um, so I always have a, have a bundle of them in here. And then of course the clippers. The clippers is really handy for um, clipping your line. 
and putting your new jig on there. And um, that's all you really need for fishing, for ice fishing. Uh, for bait, the best thing to do is to, to go to your local bait shop, chat with them. Uh, oftentimes you'll find uh, fishing reports online. Uh, social media groups will post those sorts of things too. But there's so many various baits that you can use. Sometimes it's not worth using minnows and sometimes it's better to use waxworms. So getting that fishing port is, report is really important. But otherwise, minnows are great. Uh, the best thing to do for ice fishing is make sure you've got an insulated bucket. We've got a, a bucket here. It's got an insulated um, uh, minnow bucket inside there. And our minnows are doing great. Get a little uh, minnow scoop so that your fingers don't get wet. Another really great thing for your bait is a bait puck. And inside there we have our little red dyed maggots. You can also use wax worms. And there's a various types of little worm critters that you can have. Uh, so that's live bait, but uh, those can be attached to the lures or bear hooks or whatever uh, is, is working at that lake. So get a hold of some people that have been fishing or at the bait shop and find out what's working and they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. All right, that kind of covers what we're uh, talking about tonight. We're going to have another one of these series in another week where we learn how to use that equipment, where to fish, and different fishing techniques for the different species. But right now, it's our question and answer time. So um, I see that there's one question. What's the biggest fish you can get? Well, that just kind of depends what water body you're in and what you're fishing for. Um, you notice that pike. I don't know how large that pike was in that one photograph, but um, you could get quite large pike here. Um, they go up, I've heard of pike up here up to 20 pounds. We also have some pretty big walleye in the state and some pretty good catfish. We don't have flatheads up that I know that we ice fish for, but um, definitely can get the biggest fish. The biggest fish are probably in the larger water bodies like Lake Oahe and uh, those places. I heard of a guy last year that was down on a little pond, a little small lake uh, by pressure that ended up catching, um, I think it was an 18 pound walleye out of there last year. So there's always a possibility that you're gonna get a big fish. On the Eastern side of South Dakota, where they're kind of famous for their, we call them slab pan fish, for the large perch and stuff. And um, earlier this year under on the ice, there was a perch bite. We hear the perch bites on and it was the large perch they were catching. Um, and a large perch is, you know, like this. It's not <laughs> like those big walleye and stuff, but um, definitely can get some big fish through the ice. Um, I've heard stories too about people that used a small ice hole and caught fish so big they could barely get them through the ice. So, yep, so you can catch some big fish in this state. Anyone else have some other questions? Comments? This was our first one, guys, so we want to know how we did. <laughs> so, uh, kind of watch for a minute. All right. Well, thank you very, very much for watching. And feel free to ask more questions if you want. Um, you can always email us um, and or get on our web page and ask these questions. Get hold of me. So until next time, as Red Green says, keep your rod on the ice. Thank you.